You all know that I absolutely love VR, and this is a special one. With multiple references to the series and its 55-year history, Doctor Who, The Edge of Time, combines action, adventure, and sci-fi, equipping players with the iconic sonic screwdriver to solve mind-bending puzzles, escape treacherous environments, and come face-to-face -face with classic Doctor Who monsters, all within virtual reality. Escape from the weeping angels, face off against brand new creatures, and harness fearsome weaponry in a thrilling and immersive single-player adventure. Become part of Doctor Who, developed by Sony London alumni. They also did VR Worlds, The London Heist, which is awesome, and Blood and Truth, my favorite PlayStation VR game. Doctor Who The Edge of Time will immerse players in the world of Doctor Who like never before, as you travel across space and time to save reality. Experience stunning visuals that bring the show to life featuring Jody Whitetaker as the voice of the Doctor and Nicholas Briggs in a story written by Gavin Collinson. He's the digital producer for Doctor Who and author. Developed by immersive entertainment studio Maze Theory, led by former Activision and PlayStation veterans, Doctor Who The Edge of Time is available right now for the PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, Oculus Quest, and HTC Vive. Superstar Mario modder Kay's Emanuar, whose work we've uh, featured before, has a huge new project out. Super Mario 64 Land. It's an all-new Mario game based on Super Mario 64 that adds new levels, new bosses, new power-ups, and even new music. There's a catch, however. It's technically a mod for Super Mario 64, not a full standalone executable, so you're gonna need a ROM to play it on your computer, but whatever. That's a pretty easy workaround in the age of the interwebs. There's a trailer showing off how it introduces more contemporary Mario items into the Nintendo 64 engine, like 3D World's cat suit. I would love to tell you how to download it, and try it yourself, but the download link has gone missing, presumably because of a takedown notice from Nintendo. It looks like quadruped robots are going to run rampant in the near future. Boston Dynamics, the company responsible for this astonishing biped, released its first real commercial for its dog-like bot, spot back in September. And now we have new footage of MIT's mini cheetah robot in a group of nine strong. Watch as the mini robot cheetahs backflip, run, and perform synchronized drills for a glimpse of a world that'll probably soon be crawling with these things. Twitter page Robot and AI World recently posted a clip of the robot cheetahs, but you have to watch the full video to get a sense of just how impressive they actually are. Now, according to MIT News, these new mini cheetahs weigh in at 20 pounds and have a range of motion that rivals a champion gymnast. The quadrobots also have legs with 360 degree maneuverability, meaning if you flip them over, they still function normally. Like Boston Dynamics Atlas, they can also right themselves after being kicked over. Oh, and in terms of pure metalhead madness, they could reach a top speed of nearly 28 miles per hour. MIT News also notes that these mini cheetahs are the first four-legged robots to do a backflip. Although, to be fair, most people are probably familiar with those little toy robot dogs that are able to perform the acrobatic feat as well. Obviously, these robots are far more advanced and capable than the toy dogs, so perhaps these are the first real robot quadrupeds to be able to do a backflip. That subjective distinction, it seems, is up for debate. That question of precedence aside, the members of MIT's Department of Mechanical Engineering have highlighted these mini cheetahs as being a significant evolutionary step for quadruped robots because of how robust and modular they are. Benjamin Katz, a technical associate from MIT who's a member of the project's development team, told MIT News, you can put these parts together almost like Legos. He also added that they don't break easily 
easily. However, if they do, they're cheap and they're easy to fix, thanks in part to the fact that the legs are all separately motorized and interchangeable. It's unclear what range of tasks these mini cheetahs will take on in the future. If they're deployed in the same way as Spot, well, they'll probably be helping with monitoring construction sites, providing services as remote inspectors of dangerous environments, and even for security purposes. For right now, however, Cats and the other members of the project are hoping to have some kind of robot dog race through an obstacle course in order to test the efficiency of different control algorithms. A prospect that seems entertaining and perhaps even a precursor test for package delivery capabilities. Fitbit is to be acquired by Google in an all-cash deal worth $2.1 billion, the two companies announced recently. The company will be folded into the search giant, forming part of its hardware team, making a new generation of wearables. Judging from the statements made by Fitbit CEO James Park and Google's hardware chief Rick Osterloh, Feature Fitbit devices will run Wear OS, with Google's resources and global platform, says Park. Fitbit will be able to accelerate innovation in the wearables category, scale faster, and make health even more accessible. Osterloh adds that the deal is an opportunity to invest even more in Wear OS, as well as introduce made by Google wearable devices. Wear OS's Samir Samat says that the pair will smash Fitbit's hardware and Google's software smarts together. Fitbit has been plagued by rumors that it was exploring a sale and that Google's parent company Alphabet was the prime bidder. The deal is expected to close next year pending approval from regulators and, of course, Fitbit shareholders. And with Fitbit's market cap of around $1.6 billion, it looks as if Google is paying over the odds, or at least more than it could, to pick up the company to bolster its hardware strategy. Fitbit has said that its devices will continue to be platform agnostic, working with both iOS and Android devices in the future. Google has also said that Fitbit health and wellness data will not be used for Google Ads, although it will collect data as much as it does with its other platforms. It will be interesting to see how this impacts Fitbit users in the short and medium term, as well as Google's other Wear OS partners like Fossil. While you're stuffing turkey leftovers into your belly, the last thing you want to think about is E. coli. But spare a thought for the bacterium. It's not always here to harm you, and it needs to eat as well. Now, according to a new paper published in Cell, scientists have developed a strain of E. coli that feeds on carbon dioxide. As Nature explains, the bacteria usually prefers sugars, but the lab created strains that could be used to create biofuels with a lower emissions footprint than conventional production methods. E. coli, for all its bad press, has already been used to do many useful things. Several years ago, researchers managed to store encrypted data in the microorganisms. This isn't the first time we've seen carbon-guzzling strains either, but previous efforts have only consumed CO2 as a small part of their diet compared to this latest generation. If you were hoping the new bacteria could be used to suck CO2 out of the air and help save the planet, sadly that's not viable right now. Not least because this modified bacterium currently emits more than it consumes, but the team behind the research does claim the strain could be used to develop food and hopes that switching to electricity as an energy source might reduce those emissions. As appetizing as E. coli food sounds, we'll have to wait a long time to find out what the dinner plate of the future looks like. The researchers say that the work is mostly a proof of concept at this time, so our dreams or nightmares of an E. coli-based holiday dinner are still some way off. Something else to be thankful for, I would imagine.